everyone and welcome to Standard & Poor's. I'm Catherine Mathis and I'm a past president of New York Women in Communication and I'm also the Senior Vice President of Marketing and Communications for Standard & Poor's and we're so glad that all of you could join us here today for what we think is going to be a fabulous, fabulous event. Thank you, and good morning. Um, it's an honor and a pleasure, so I'm excited to be here with Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm excited, too. One of the things, and I think we should address the perhaps not-so-large elephant in the room, but um, one of the things that really struck me is I was reading in a, an article that you wrote for Cosmo that you said the loudness of the coverage in terms of your firing was, quote, surprising. Surprised, of course, Erica, because I think first we're both journalists. We're used to being the ones covering someone and asking the questions. So it was just unfamiliar to me uh, in many ways to suddenly be the subject of what seemed momentarily, and I knew it would pass, to be kind of a media feeding frenzy. And just, I, you know, I, there was quite a bit of coverage when I was named executive editor. I was, you know, the first woman to have the job ever. And, you know, there's coverage when I was made managing editor and Washington bureau chief, too, because I was the first woman in those jobs. But nothing like when I was fired. <laughs> uh, it paled. Um, one of the things that, that also really stuck out to me is the way you've embraced this being fired. We yeah. talked briefly the other day, and, and I was telling you how a reporter I worked with early on said, until you've been fired, you haven't made it, um, which made me feel better when I got fired. But I love the way you say it. You know, you'd know, you rather be known as the fired executive editor yeah. of the New York Times than the former executive editor. Why? And is it, is it, is it about the power of, of sort of owning that word? Not really. It's because... I don't think in real time, like from the moment I was fired, I was aware that it was going to be sort of, it's very corny to say, I hate the, the, the cliche teachable moment, but I was aware, you know, I'm the first woman to hold what many consider to be the premier mm -hmm. job in elite journalism anyway, and you know, it was important to me from the first minute to both kind of show what I was made of, to try to, you know, be an example for, you know, everyone gets fired. Who here? Raise your hand if you've never been fired. Uh, um, I mean, you know... Most people, you know, go through a career, you know, I look out, many of you are young, so maybe it hasn't happened to you. I hope it doesn't happen to you. But most people actually do get fired from a job. And I wanted to make, to, to not make it this like, oh no, you can't talk about it kind of thing. There is a stigma uh -huh. with it, whether it's, whether it's that you got fired if or, or it was, you know, more politically correct, you were laid off, or there was downsizing. There does seem to be a stigma well, that comes along with it, that somehow you did something wrong, whether or not you actually did. Well, I felt strongly I hadn't done anything wrong, and basically, I've devoted, if I've devoted my career to anything, it's to telling the truth. Mm -hmm. So the idea as, like, when, you know, I was called up, to be given this news, I was handed a press release that said I had decided to leave, and I just said, there is just no effing way. You know, I have <laughs> devoted my life to telling the truth, and I'm being fired, and that's like what I'm going to say and what I want said. I don't want, like, the absurdity of, like, why on earth would I have decided to step down? It's like... <laughs> Nutty. To spend more time uh, with your dog. Yeah, right. <laughs> spend more quality time with the dog, exactly. 
right. I think it's been very democratizing in a way to how information gets shared. I think social media, I think Facebook, if you were going to ask me what is the most influential media institution right now, I would say Facebook. I'd say the most influential person in the media right now is not like, was not Jill Abramson, the executive editor of the New York Times, but is the 26-year-old engineer at Facebook who does the algorithm for its news feed. Seriously. Seriously. 